You're creating a standard that your own religion can't pass. Let me give you an example. Show me what. Let, 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 yes, I'll of course. Respond. I'll let you respond. I'll let you respond. Right, right. So you've created a standard. You've said, show me where Jesus says I am God. Right. Great. I will do that. But here's my challenge to you. Show me where Isa in the Quran says I am the Messiah. Because the point is, you've got a double standard. You're demanding a level of evidence from me that you don't have in your own holy book. If I said to you, if I, if I said to you, show me in the Quran where it says pray five times a day, you can't do it. If I said to you, show me in the Quran where it gives you the formula of the Shahada, you can't do it. If I said to you, show me in the Quran where it says, um, you know, how you should perform Salah, you can't do it. If, uh, my point being, do you do you understand the argument? You're creating a criterion. Let me finish. You're creating you're creating a criterion for my religion that your religion can't pass. That's untrue because you're ignoring hadith. You're ignoring the sayings of the Prophet. Yeah. Because we can say that we know the Prophet said this. You cannot say that we know that Jesus said this. So when you say that, um, does, does, do we know that, how do we know in the Quran that Jesus is the Messiah? Because our Prophet literally told us, Jesus, son of Mary, is the Messiah. So he told us, so we know it. So show me somewhere in the same way that Jesus said, I am God, or worship me. He never said it. In fact, he said the opposite. He put his face down on the floor and he prayed to God. He said, don't call me good, only the Father is good. He said, I do not have... Brother. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no. yeah. 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 So, 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 so that standard is possible in our religion because our prophet directly said those things and those things are recorded. And we have it, we, we know historically that those things were said by Muhammad He said that Jesus is the Messiah. He right. Said that there, yeah, so, yeah. So, 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 so let me reply to that. So you, you, the, you, firstly, you actually misquoted the Bible. Jesus did in, not in say, no, you didn't. You got it wrong, totally wrong. Come, come. Jesus did not say, do not call me God. Why do you call me God? He says, why do you call me God? So that, why, no, it, why, asking that question, why do you call me God, is not the same as saying, don't call me God. The that very is. fact that you quoted that inaccurately tells me again that you and you should have a red flag going up in your mind that you've absorbed a script that you've not bothered to check because you actually quoted it wrongly. Yeah. But right? I'm even even in your quotation, right? why do you call me? I, God? I haven't finished replying. Okay, I, no, no, I haven't yeah. finished replying. Ahead, right. Secondly, you also said something that that scholars have corrected you on. You said that the the, the earliest was 120 AD. 129. Right. Uh, right. Scholars don't believe that, my friend. That your quote, your scholarship is a hundred years out of date. The last time scholars made those arguments were in the, sorry, it's 200 years out of date. It's in the 1800s. Scholars today, scholars today, for instance, like Dr. Bruce Metzger, Dr. Bart Ehrman, Dr. Daniel Wallace, to name three textual scholars of the New Testament. Academics, I'm guessing. The academics. Or, and, and Bart Ehrman's not even a Christian. He's a critic of Christianity, right? The other two are Christians, and one of them's dead, right? All of those scholars agree that the entirety of the New Testament was written in 90 AD. All of it, All of it. including the letter of Titus, 90 AD. That's still so that's that, 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 right. Now, hold on one second. I'll address that point as well then, right? Uh, no, no, no. I have a question, sir. Sorry, we're having a conversation. Okay, understand. We're, we're having a conversation. Yeah, yes. So, so you, you, you say it's a hundred year gap, right? Firstly, it's not a hundred year gap, it's less than a hundred years. Because Christ, the events around Christ's death and resurrection are, occurred around 33 AD. So that's less than a hundred years. Secondly, the hadiths that you believe in all come 200 years after Muhammad died. That is true. Were, when was Sahih al Bukhari were, written? Yeah, they were written. Thank you. But, but where did they come from? The people who transmitted it. We have their full biographies. We have the when, but but those bio. Wait one second. Because again, you don't know your own religion. The biographies of the the Isnad chains were written later than the collections of the hadiths. Do were you aware of that? I was not allowed to check that. You need to check that, bro, because this is the point. You've Red flags should be going up in your mind, bro, because you've absorbed a script you've never bothered to check. We Christians are checking your script, and what you think is the reality is not the reality. You, you, the, the biographies that you're appealing to about the Isnad chains, right, were all written after the compilations of the hadiths themselves. And furthermore, some of those biographies are like literally they're not a biography they're just a single sentence about some of the people inside the Isnad chain that is not a biography 
that's an assertion. Yeah, okay. So and assertions so don't make history. Question, you said you were going to show me um, when Jesus himself said, I am God, I worship me. Yeah, right. I'm going to show you where Jesus said, I, I get, again, it's call him, where he called himself God. Okay? According to the Quran, and I'm going to use the Quran as my reference point because you believe in the Quran, right? But the, the example that I'm going to give you is good because it works in the Quran and it works in the Old Testament as well. So I can use the same argument with a Jew as well as with a Muslim. According to the Quran, who is the first? As in the first being the first. Who is called the first in the Quran? Allah, yes, yeah, right. I can show you the reference if you want. I've got it in my, I've got it in my bag. So the Quran says Allah is the first. The Quran says Allah is the last. These are the names of Allah, right? Now let me show you where Jesus calls himself the first and the last. So he calls himself God. Right, so in Revelations it says, this is Jesus speaking. You can see it's Jesus speaking because it says, I, Jesus. So we know, right? Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Who is the beginning and the end? Islamically speaking. Who, who, who is Islamic? Right. So Jesus is calling himself God. So when you think to yourself, because you've absorbed the script, that, oh, Jesus never said X or Jesus never said Y, what you should be doing is when I'm pointing out to you that actually the information you're working from is wrong, you should start to ask yourself, well, what other information am I working from is wrong? The only, the only contention I'll have with that yeah, is on. Jesus in the Bible also said that um, he is the message of God. Yes. And he is the word. And so we, we accept that the first, because Muhammad was not the founder of Islam. We believe that Adam was the first Muslim, yeah. Abraham, Noah, they were all Muslims. Yeah. So the message that Jesus is bringing, and I'll, I'll have to look at the original Aramaic, what, what you, this, obviously this is from, probably from the Greek manuscripts. No, it, so firstly, I've got to correct you again. Yeah, tell me. The, the New Testament was originally written in Greek. That was the lingua franca of the people of the time. And had been. Of the time of Jesus? Yes. And had Greek. been. Yes. And had been, and you've got archaeological evidence to prove that. Okay, yeah, okay. 200 years before Jesus was born, they translated the entire Old Testament into Greek. Okay. Right? There are tombstones in Palestine of Jews written in Greek. Right? There are Greek, there are Jewish documents written in Greek. I, I, I see that because, of course, there, 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 are, there are a lot of metaphors. Are, what I'm saying is, if, if, if Jesus was God, do you not think that, that that would have been a pivotal message? That would have been like something clear, like, look, I am God. He did. He did make it clear. I'll show you where he calls himself. I'll show you. I'll tell you. I'll show you where he says that you should worship him. Okay. All right. But it's going to involve some thinking. Yeah. Now, bro, you sound to me like you're a man that can think. So all I'm asking you to do, at this moment in time, I'm not even asking you to believe it. I'm just asking you to think logically. All right. So on that, while you find it, I've got it. Logically. Okay. Yeah, tell me. Right. So Jesus says this. Bear with us one second. Right. Hold on. Oh, maybe I've got it wrong. Bear with us one second. Right, here it is. Okay. So we're just going to think this through logically, right? Just because you agree with what I'm saying that the scripture says. Oh, thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Right? Just because you agree with the logic of the scripture doesn't mean you believe it, yeah. right? But we, we just want to be honest, literary students. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about what I say, exactly. It's not what I say, it's not what you say, it's what the Bible says, yeah. right? Yeah. And then whether you believe it or not is a separate question. Yeah. Okay, so Jesus says this, for just as the father raises the dead and gives them eternal life, um, so even the son also gives life to whom he wishes, for not even the father judges anyone but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honour the Son even as they honour the Father. Now, let's start thinking logically. In this passage, who is the Father? God. God, right? And Jesus says, right, and, and how do you honour the Father? How do you honour God? By honouring the people he sent. Right, you, that's one thing that you do. What else do you do to honour God? Honouring the text he sent. Agreed, absolutely. What else do you do to honour God? You bow down and worship him. Exactly, right? So Jesus is saying, 
that all should honor the Son. Now, who's the Son in this statement? Jesus. So Jesus is saying, all will honor the Son even as they honor the Father. So you gave three things by which we honor the Father. We honor the, the ones that the Father sent. We honor the ones that God sent. So Jesus sends his apostles and we should honor his apostles, right? You said that we should honor his texts. Well, the apostles wrote the New Testament, so we should honor the New Testament. And you said that we should bow down and worship him. Exactly was your reply to my statement. So that means that Jesus is saying you should bow down and worship him because you should honor the son even as they honor the father. So Jesus is literally saying bow down and worship him. I'm not lying to you, bro. Well, I would say, yeah. but it's the same brother. But 